Welcome to the R video tutorial agent based models part seven. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you're probably going to want to go back and look at them and get the code in order to be able to follow along because this code is quite complicated and I try to detail it out, but I can't be reinventing the code every time. All right. So what we want to do is we want to add another state in here. So what we're going to try to do right now is add to our S E I R D. Let's just do the recovered state and we're going to do the recovered state in a very simplistic manner. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to change my agent. Okay. I'm going to need to add something to it in order for this to work the way I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here to have time and then I'm going to put an E on the end. This is going to be the time that they have been exposed. Now this person is exposed. Okay. So that means they've been exposed for some time and we're going to put time E equals one for this agent. Now on the other agents that we make, they also have to have the same sort of naming convention, but their time exposed will be zero because they haven't been exposed yet, right? Because they're all susceptible. So we'll put set those to zero. And just by doing this, we've automatically changed an attribute of the agents here. And that's what we're trying to do is understand that the agents have attributes and we can add to those attributes. Okay. Now we have this other attribute here that we can keep track of and we can use that attribute to help them move between states. So we're just going to stick with 10 time periods in the future. We're going to stick with our same setup we've had before. All right. Now here's where the people met other people and they became exposed. And if we go down through here, we have to look through everybody in the population and they mixed, come down here, find out where our loop ends because we want to do it before our loop ends, but we don't want to do it in the middle of one of these. So that loop ends there. This loop ends here. So got, this is important to keep track of when you're trying to code because you have all of these little brackets around and it's hard to keep track of exactly what bracket is closing off what thing. All right. So now that we have people in the infected or the, the state of E, what we're going to do is we are going to grab those who are in that state. So I'm going to do, let's say, uh, call them state E people. And I'll put one here for right now because I'm going to need several of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my agents and I'm going to grab the agents that have this sta state in it for them. So, but I'm actually going to grab an index of the agents. So there are n one pop, right? Or n pop one people. Okay. So I'm going to sample this and I'm only going to grab those who are the state of that I'm interested in. So, okay. So I've got this where agent one dollar sign state equals E. Okay. So what this does is it gives me the list of all the people who have this state. Now, if I run this right now, you'll quickly see that it'll only return one person, first person, but it's their location in the data frame. Okay. So that way I can pull them and then change their state in terms of the time mixing. So what I want to do is I want to do here for agent one dollar sign time E for those agents in my state E1. I want to take that and add to it a one. So as we move through time, this indexes forward so that they spend more time there. Okay. Not more time, but what we want to do is we want to say, okay, well, if you spent so much time here, you'll automatically move to the recovered bin. And that's why we're keeping track of the time. But so I need to index this forward. So we need to put in here some comments, grab those who have been exposed and index them forward or move forward in time or increment the time for them that they've been exposed because each time they go through this, 
they're going to become exposed one more time and exposed one more time and exposed one more time, one more day that they'll have been in that state. And then we can put in here, okay, well, what do we know about this particular disease? Well, right now we're going to pick an arbitrary date to make this work reasonably well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, something very simple. We're going to make a very simple statement here. So we're going to grab from our state E1, we want to grab the people who have been, let's say, exposed more than three days or four days, and then we'll move them to the recovered automatically. Okay, I know that's unrealistic in this sense, but we don't want to run this a really long time. So let's just do that. So we want to take the people, uh, not the we want the people who are in agent one. Well, so let's grab those. Uh, state E2, we're going to grab the people who are in our state E1. Well, no, we need to do this for the whole group here. We're just going to copy and paste this. And we're going to add another statement on here. We're going to add an and statement. So logic becomes very important here. So agent one dollar sign time E is greater than three. Okay, so this is going to grab these people. Uh, and and it, well, right now we don't have anybody in this state, but that's fine. And it doesn't really matter. So then what we can do is then we can say agent one dollar sign state for the people who are in our state E2. Okay, we're going to assign them the state of R. Okay, so they've spent three days there, and then they will go to the recovered bin. And we can actually watch this happen as we go through this. We'll see um, how this works as we go through here. But hopefully this makes sense. I know this is a really weird way to do it, but I only want to grab those who have the E. But I want to grab their state who they are so that I can put them in here. Now I could nest these together and then it just becomes completely unreadable. But this will allow me to grab these people and move them along. And let's hope this works here because we don't have anybody in that state. Let's see, run. And it says, oh wait, it doesn't allow me to put a value factor in there of R. Okay, and I mentioned this in one of the previous videos that, oh, wait, you can't, you can't make that equal to R. So, so this piece works. So if I run this, this piece works. If I look here, it should be one person. State E1. Well, right now it doesn't because it's uh, been rewriting over itself. Remember that. Um, so here, we don't even have anybody in the state. And if we looked at the agents, they're probably all messed up, right? So this state got changed to not available. And that's because R is seeing this as a factor. And this becomes a problem when you're making these things. That you need to, whenever you add a new state, you need to make sure that your data frame is prepared for it. Because it just sees that there's E's and S's. So what you should put on these are here strings to factors equals uh, false. Okay? And you're going to have to do this on both of them. You want it to keep it as a string. Otherwise, it's going to consider it a factor, and then we're going to get errors like this. Okay, And that's uh, what we don't want. We want to be able to expand our groups or our states initially now there's other ways we could prime up as a factor and say these are this many levels but i don't really want to do that so let's try to run this again and see what happens okay this time we didn't get an error and it's because we put this string to factors in and now what we can do is we can come down and see how well our item worked here or our logic worked and we did out one and notice people move to the recovered bin so now this isn't what we should have had completely, but people did move to the recover bin. We had nine and susceptible. This person never infected anybody else. Okay. He never infected anybody else or exposed anybody else. So he becomes the one person who moves there. Okay. Because we only left it for three days. So he didn't have that many chances to meet other people. 
But this is a way you can change things. So, for example, if we wanted to, we could come up here and move our time up to, let's say, 30 days. Well, no, let's not go 30 days. Let's just go 15 days. And what we want to do is increase our population size. So let's make it 100. And the other thing I want to change is, if you remember, we said they will only meet three people. Let's maybe make them meet 10 people. Okay, they could take and meet uh, up to 10 people a day. And by changing this, we should get a different picture. So it runs through. Notice it's taking a little bit longer. So these models do take a while to run. And now we can come over here and look, we can look at out one. And in general, notice this person still didn't infect anybody because it's only three days. Right? They were only there for three days. But you can look at it as we go along and... This is sort of the logic we could do here. So if I made them 14 days, then it would take a while for them to move into this recovered bin. So let's run this real quick. I'm just going to hit the control A and then run. Then we'll look at out one and we'll see if the dynamics look any different. Okay. Well, they did infect somebody along the way. Okay. Somewhere along the way. They infected somebody who then became recovered, and for some reason we're not recording the right... No, we should be end time. We're not grabbing the right people. So these are the people in the link that are in that state. So somehow we started off with two, but we'll debug that in the next one. Hopefully you're getting this idea that it's you have to move these people through time, and this really makes a difference here on this one. All right, so we'll come back and fix this up in the next video because this one's running long, and we'll add the infected state. All right, see you then.